Well, let's bring in Sol Takahashi. He's a professor of human rights and peace studies at Osaka Jogakin University. He's also a former deputy head at the office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights in Occupied Palestine. He joins us today from Baku. Uh, professor, these initiatives by Western countries, the airdrops, the new port, a maritime corridor, they essentially bypass the bottlenecks and the constraints on the land borders, which are happening because Israel says they need to check all of the aid going into the Strip. These new aid routes, though, presumably also require approval or cooperation of Israel. So is Israel now essentially saying those checks aren't necessary? Why not then just let the trucks in? I mean, look, this is not predominantly a humanitarian issue. Uh, this is not some kind of, you know, natural disaster, a tsunami or an earthquake or anything like that. This is a, a like you say, a man-made disaster. It is a genocide. The Israelis are inflicting genocide on the Palestinians. Now, if the Americans or the EU uh, gave a hoot about Palestinian lives, what they should be doing is not pretending like they are Hollywood action heroes and, you know, airlifting supplies into Berlin. Mm. What they should be doing is stopping the endless flow of weapons and stopping the political support for Israeli genocide. And they should be, you know, Biden could halt all of this mm -hmm. tomorrow with one phone call. And the fact that they are not doing it, um, the fact that Biden is not doing it really shows me that he must think American voters are really stupid. Uh, are these new plans then, do you think, also a tacit acknowledgement of sorts that the US and its allies, aside from the arms that you're talking about, essentially don't have the influence beyond that to get Israel to live up to basic international legal obligations? Well, the notion that they don't have the influence is, is ludicrous. I mean, without the weapons, without the political support, all of this would stop tomorrow. And if the Americans and the EU really cared about Palestinian lives, if they really cared about Palestinian rights, and the Palestinian right of self-determination, they could take much more effective steps that would really alleviate the situation mm. tomorrow. The fact that they're not doing it shows that they don't really care. And all of this is for domestic consumption, basically. Sure. Let me ask you a little bit about what logistics might look like on the ground if all of this does go ahead as someone who's worked for the UN. These are obviously ways to get aid into Gaza, but how do you then deal with the distribution on the ground once it's inside? Well, look, all of these are, you know, all of these are logistical details that need, need to be sorted out. But like, I, like I've said, this is not predominantly a humanitarian issue. Mm. If the Israelis were to allow a proper, the proper distribution of humanitarian aid, like the International Court of Justice ordered them to do, then all of this could be sorted out, you know, with a very, in a, within a very short period of time. But the fact that, you know, we're even talking about this just goes to show that the Israelis have no intention whatsoever of allowing this. And they're being aided and abetted in all of this by the Western governments. Let me ask you about the narrative that this perpetuates here. The World Food Programme has had to suspend operations in the north because it can't guarantee security there. I know some observers are now using the phrase collective humiliation. So Israel's creating the conditions for the, the level of desperation and the lawlessness that comes with that as people try to keep their families alive. Well, yes, for sure. I mean, the, look, the entire, Israeli, the entire Israeli occupation of Palestine, and I'm including 48 within this, uh, is based on collective humiliation, a daily humiliation, uh, which is geared towards uh, encouraging and pushing Palestinians out of their homes and out of their lands. So yes, this is just another extension, just another level of humiliation and another level of genocide, which is which what we're witnessing. Let me ask you one thing about the, the US plan that, that really struck me. The Pentagon saying it could take up to two months to build this temporary port. I mean, that surely gives us some insight into how the White House feels that ceasefire negotiations are going, how long the White House thinks this war and the siege will last. Well, look, yes. I mean, I, I, my, my personal opinion is that probably Biden just sort of announced this initiative without real knowledge of how long it would take. But Look, really, it is for domestic consumption. Like I just said, he must really think that the rest of the world and, frankly, American voters are really stupid to think that, you know, they would be fooled by this act of uh, Hollywood action hero, you know, airlifting supplies into Berlin. This is not what this is about. This is a man-made disaster. This is a genocide inflicted by the Israelis. And the Americans could stop it immediately with one phone call. 
Professor, you yourself used to work for the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. Given the political context that you've sketched out for us here, what role do you now see for the United Nations here? Well, the United Nations has, has, been, has had a very, very difficult time in trying to get uh, the actors here, and in particular Israel, to abide by its obligations in inter, uh, under international law. And unfortunately, that remains. And we see, as we see with the defunding of UNRWA, uh, many of the Western governments are just all too happy to, uh, you know, buy into Israeli narratives uh, about uh, the role that the UN is playing and should be playing. So it's a it's a very it's a very difficult situation. Sol Takahashi, there, professor of human rights and peace studies at Osaka Joga Queen University. Thank you for joining us on Al Jazeera, sir, and sharing your thoughts. Thank you.